So now that we have our selection sets all set up, we've used our control shift to get used to being able to global transfer mode to move uh, controls around any pivot. Uh, we could start doing some a few more things. But before we get into that, I want to show you that uh, some objects. So you may have a different looking handle for me, and that's because I've set up my handle uh, for the way I like it. So I'm just going to minimize this. And now we have a little bit bigger space to work with. When I hit P, we now have a few options in here that we can have. So um, there's a few steps for just how it will rotate. There's the line width. So if you can just go on here, you can make it fatter or thinner, depending on how much you like it. Uh, there's the scale factor. So how big that handle is uh, when you're selecting that control, you can make it tiny or big. There's also the brightness. So if you wanted to, you can dim it down if it, if it seemed a little bit too bright and you want it to be a little bit dimmer. And we have a few other uh, options here that we can take a look at. Uh, one of them is draw handles in all viewports. So if you click this on and use space B, now you can see the handle is in every viewport. I don't need that. I usually just like it in whatever viewport I'm in. You can see it going from there uh, to do it. And if we go back onto our perspective viewport, shift B, we can get back to uh, our single view. There's also showing the handle planes where you can just have this. And now if you wrote, move it, it'll only move on that, uh, that plane uh, that you have selected. And you can see we have them for uh, all the different uh, planes that you can have. I generally don't uh, use those too much. Um, and then we have an alternate rotate mode. So normally when you grab this, you rotate it down, you rotate it up um, going from there. But what we could do is if we use the alternate uh, rotate mode, now you can just drag it in a line. So you're not, you don't have to rotate it around. You can see the little dotted line showing up in there. So you could test that out. Um, and then the other thing that you can see here is, is translate axis outside the rotate sphere. So normally it's all on the inside here, um, but that can make selecting some of them a little bit tough because you get the overlap on everything here. But by selecting it on the outside, now it's much easier to select your translate handles going on. There's also an option here. Normally what, uh, what I do is I select it and then I move it. And I guess I should mention here, if you hit M, you could cycle through a bunch of different orientations that you have on here. Um, and what you can also do is in this, if you use E, there's no scale on here, but that would be scale. R for rotate. T for translate, and if you hit Y, you can now uh, just kind of toggle between all those different modes. So um, if we wanted to, uh, for taking a look at uh, the um, use click and drag, so I have it off. So what this means is I have to select something and then I can move it. If you have this uh, on, what it means is that you just select it and moves right away. I make too many mistakes because as I'm moving quickly, um, I basically take something I don't want it to move. So I have this off uh, personally, but some people really like to be able to just select it and move it right away instead of doing the double, uh, instead of selecting it, then moving it. Again, all for your personal preference that you have on there. Um, you can also use x-ray so you can see that it's not x-rayed on there, or you can decide um, just how strong that x-ray is. So you can make it a little bit dimmer as it goes back. And then the other option here is hide controls during playback. So with that checked on, when I press play, it turns off all the controls so you can see things easier. If that's off and you press play, the controls stay on. So those are a few of uh, the different parameters that you could set up to play around with to see how you like it and make the handle the way you want. The other thing that we can have on here is if you right click on the handle, you can see with our alignments, and I said with M, you can toggle through it, so world, local, and everything. But we can also separate the alignments. And normally this is what I do is I click on the separate alignments. And then what I like is my alignment for my translates to be world. So I always know Y is up. Uh, so I can always move things directly up as I want. But that the local to be bending around hinges, especially like ankles and, and wrists and everything, they stay the same. Again, um, this uh, you can set this up however you want. This does not currently save with your file, but uh, we're looking at that. So, uh, But you can just uh, keep on just switching it as you need it as you're playing around with things. 
All right, so now that we have all those handles done up, we will just select everything, hit G and sweep it again. And we'll take a look at some tools that we have going on here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is in here, I have an all mover one, and this just allows me to move the entire character without needing another control added in there for that. So if I go here, I actually should have been on here. Um, since I was on frame one, let me just get this and sweep this. And let's go to frame 10. We're going to use our upper body mover or our all mover and rotate the character up here and set a key. And since we have a pin, it will guarantee to key all those blocking channels that we want. So that's great now that I've been able to move that. But what if I wanted to dangle her from her feet? I don't have a pivot up here, so I can't uh, move it from there. We could take it from the leg and just with that all mover, we could still do everything and rotate it around that foot if we wanted to. Um, but what we can also do is we could start using one of our tools. And up here, you can see our pose tools and there's a locator button here. But if you hold C, you also have a radial menu and we can just do add locator here. And now simply um, what we could do is if we, when we're in a tool, you can see these change a little bit. So you can see there's different uh, options just so you have little hints of what the hotkeys will be. So if you hit H, that'll create a new locator. If you have um, something uh, selected, so if I had this foot and I said uh, H, it would create a constraint between those two. But I don't want the constraint right now, so I'm going to just click off of it and I'm going to hit H. And you can see it's created a little null there. Now there's a few options that we have on this null when we select it, is that if you use your middle mouse button, you could change the shape of it there. So you can see that the shapes are changing however you want it to be. You can even have uh, different uh, uh, like geometry shapes in there if you want. And if you hold shift down and use the middle mouse button, you could scale it up. So we'll just take a look at uh, this. I'm just going to use this little cone here that we have on there. And now what I could do is I can use this uh, to rotate my character um, about. So if I wanted to make her be dangling from there, we can do that. And we could set up a new set from that too, just to make it even easier. So we have our all mover here. So I just select that. I'm going to select the locator. I'm going to right click in here and create set from selected. And I'm just going to call this dangle. So really quickly, now every time I can, I could just select this and now when I use control shift, I can now swing her around here. So if we wanted to, you can see it's all going up here. We're just going to start from uh, frame 10, but I also had this and I didn't want it. So what we can also take a look at is if we right click on our time bar, we could show our animation toolbar. And this is where our animation sliders live. And you have lots of different options in here. There's, if I make these uh, tool size, if I make it compact, you can see there's a whole bunch in here. Too much to go over. Um, generally, if I, I use maybe four or five, but everyone's different of how they use it. Some of them work better for like more for graph editor doing it versus viewport. But we'll take a look at this right now. And I'm just gonna make this nice and big again, tool size extra wide. And one of the things that I could do is that I can blend it to the neighbor. So just using the dangle, this is my neighbor key here. Um, and what I can do is I can just drag this over and now she's upside down. So really quickly, you're able to get to those poses and fix them all up as you want. And now that we have um, this new dangle holding with this selected, it'll key it. I can also just uh, pin this if I wanted to, but now we get the key on there and you can see the keying now goes a bright green versus a dull green on there. So if we wanted to, and we wanted to swing this character, what we can do is just put her there and I already have a key on there. So it can go down here and then we can go over to 20 and we can just rotate her up there, set a key um, on there. Again, I should probably pin this just to make sure that's keyed there. And now we get this rotation going on here. Now this isn't switching the interpolation. It's still a linear uh, IK translation for uh, all the IK controls that we have here. So if I just shift select this and hit delete, we can see how this is behaving. So now just with the two keys, you can see it's a linear translation from the, from the hands and it's getting all squished in there. So if you wanted to, uh, easy way to fig uh, fix this up is again, you could just go blend to neighbor and then rotate it around here. And now, now we get the better uh, translation because you're just doing a breakdown in there. So there's a lot of uh, ways that you can start using that. So now um, 
We can also, once we create it, we can just go back into our animation and we can start doing everything from there. And we can still use everything if we wanted it. If we want to use the lower body mover, we could start uh, changing uh, the position of that, how this actually did it the wrong way. Say we want to do a little bit of a drag on there. So this can go down and you can start playing around with these things as, as much as you want. So um, I hope that makes sense for using your selection sets, being able to set up different things, using your um, using your uh, um, locator to add a different pivot that you want to be in there, being able to uh, select, create a new uh, control, a uh, new set, blending it to neighbors, doing your breakdowns in there and getting these uh, to be animated as you need be. So, and you can do it again as much as you want. You can just do that and start breaking it down a little bit more um, just as you want to go from there. So um, next we're gonna be taking a look at a little bit more about uh, animation. Um, now we, this has mostly just been posing tools and using the selection sets and our control shift and starting to use some tools in our animation sliders uh, to go on. We'll start getting into more animation uh, as we move on next.